Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about what does a chemical formula actually mean. So you are probably familiar with the formula for water, but what does this actually mean? Okay, so the 2 is called a subscript and it always applies to the element in front of it. So it's saying that there's two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom, but what does that even mean? It means it's basically like a recipe. If you were going to make water, you would need two hydrogens for every one oxygen. I'm going to show you a couple of video clips to help understand this concept better. All right, so here is a video by Scott Millman. And what you see is he's got, this is water, and he's got some test tubes upside down that he's filling with water. And he's putting them over these pieces of metal, and he's going to attach it to a battery. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow water to be separated. And we're going to see here in a moment, let me zoom forward a little bit, you can see gas forming. And it's going to form at a very specific amount. Let me see if I can look at that. So this gas is about 5 cubic centimeters, while this gas is about 2.5 cubic centimeters. So which one's hydrogen, which one's oxygen? Well, this one must be hydrogen because there's twice as much as there is oxygen, H2O, twice as much hydrogen per oxygen. And that's where we get this formula, H2O. You can see in the video, when we separate water, we get two parts hydrogen for every one part oxygen. We can also do the reverse. We can put hydrogen and oxygen together and make water. Okay, so here we have a video by N. Larson4952. And you in it, you will see that the teacher is filling up a bottle with water. And then she turns the water upside down, so it's got a nice seal. And she's going to use two canisters. One of them is hydrogen gas. And so you can see that she's going to fill the hydrogen gas into the bottle. You can see it bubbling and pushing the water out of the way. And then we're going to see her doing it with the other canister. You'll notice she had put, let me go back a moment. So before she even, like, this one is the oxygen, look how much of the container is hydrogen. You want more hydrogen than oxygen because we know that if I want to have that chemical change occur, I need twice as much hydrogen as oxygen. And it turns out that when we put it together, we're going to see um, a lot of energy being released. So we're going to see here we go. We're filling the bottle now with oxygen gas. She's then going to cap it to trap the gas in there. Okay, so you can now see they're in the classroom with the lights off. Um, this student has a bottle with the hydrogen and oxygen gas combination. It hasn't reacted yet. We have to provide some starting energy called activation energy. Watch what happens when they bring the match to it. So she can, <laughs> could you see it? Um, it like shot across the room. I'm going to try turning on the sound. One more time. It's Amanda. Yeah. So you see a tremendous amount of energy was released when you actually um, put two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen together and you let it form a compound of water, a lot of energy is released. And that's the idea behind hydrogen fuel cells that people are looking at. Can we power, power a car this way? Could we have a car with like a hydrogen tank and an oxygen tank and let them mix, provide a spark, and poof, the car will move forward. So hopefully you now understand that the compound, this formula, tells us the recipe, that it's two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. And we looked at a couple demos to prove to you that that's actually what's happening, that it literally has to be twice as much hydrogen as oxygen. Have a good day. Please subscribe if this was helpful. Bye-bye.